We'll turn now to the Press Review, and for that, we are joined by Solange Mougin. Solange, you're starting off here in France with a debate that begins today in the National Assembly over immigration. Yeah, and the French paper La Croix is uh, discussing what is actually contained in this uh, proposed bill, I I from making deportations easier to cutting red tape for employees, for wor illegal migrant workers, uh, for illegal workers, rather, that cannot, uh, that ha are working in sectors that can't find employees. Now, La Croix hopes in its editorial that there will be some balance or equilibrium in this potentially explosive debate. Now, for the left-leaning paper, Libération, it, it, the bill, it says, is full of incoherencies as it wants to both to deport and to hire. And it is profiling today uh, 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 illegal immigrants, namely those that have government-funded jobs. Now, for the right-leaning paper, Le Figaro, it says that the bill is flou or vague. Uh, with a language that's calling for both firmness and for humanity, and thus enticing the opposition. Now, for L'Opinion, it, it says that the government is pulling a, a U-turn uh, on its previous, previous stances due to the far right's gains in the last election. And it argues that Macron is seesawing, as we can see illustrated in CAC's uh, drawing here. Uh, you have a left, someone on the left holding a sign that says, Bienvenue en France, welcome to France. Another one that says, go back to Africa. And then another uh, a Macron supporter here saying, how do you say both at the same time in Sudanese? Really different, diff interesting to see how different political persuasions play into coverage of that issue. Solange Mujan, well, we'll head to another heated parliamentary debate elsewhere, this time in Switzerland, on the definition of rape. Yeah, the Swiss, the lower house of the Swiss parliament uh, voted, as Le Temps tells us today, uh, they voted to broaden uh, what is legally considered as rape uh, to create an only yes means yes policy. It decides, it decided that all types of sex can be considered rape and that it is still rape even if the victim doesn't explicitly object. Now, as Le Temps explains uh, in the paper, the proposal passed by a narrow margin after a heated debate, and it isn't law yet. But for Le Temps, too much hope is being placed on this bill, for it says such violence remains very hard to judge in court. And court cases, there are a plenty of them. As we see in Le Figaro today, it, it says that uh, the controversial Swiss cleric Tariq Ramadan is facing another uh, rape trial in Geneva, uh, the case against the professor of Islamic studies, uh, uh, this case adds to four other similar charges of rape uh, against him in France and elsewhere in Europe. Now, another famous face that is facing rape charges as well, as Le Monde tells us, is the YouTube, uh, French YouTube sensation Norman. Uh, he's being detained for questioning after accusations came forward by six women. All right, Solange, we'll shift gears entirely now. The American press is discussing today's election in Georgia for the Senate seat. Yeah, because neither candidate received uh, over 50 percent of the vote in last month's midterm elections. The local uh, Georgia paper, the Ledger Inquirer, uh, tells us that voters in this runoff are picking between starkly different choices. Um, but, or rather between Herschel Walker, who you see here, a Republican former football star uh, backed by Trump, who's faced multiple controversies, controversies, or a Democrat, uh, the standing senator and pastor Raphael Warnock. Now, if Warnock wins, the New York Times explains that this will give the Democrats a boost uh, to push in the Senate, to push through the judges of their choice, and to create a stronger opposition towards Republicans. Now, the Washington Post also has a very interesting article today about uh, the runoff itself. It explains that while this race is historic in the fact that there are two uh, black men uh, candidates, it uh, is actually racism that created this system in Georgia that requires 50 percent of the vote to win, that the rules were the work of segregationists, and it was designed to actually keep black candidates from ever winning and to give a greater advantage to white voters and white candidates. All right, Solange, well, we've got more claims of racism. That's Prince Harry, who has said that he and his wife actually left the royal family because of just that. And now he and Meghan Markle are telling their story in a documentary. 
Yeah, the British press is all abuzz today about the accusations made in a trailer uh, that's uh, that's being released, uh, that was released uh, by Netflix. Get the popcorn, says the Daily Star, as the streaming giant is about to air this coming Thursday, the first part of the couple's tell-all uh, documentary. Now, in addition to saying racism was a, a large part of their decision to leave the firm, the Times explains that Harry says in the documentary uh, that, quote, royal life is a dirty game, that it includes not just a hierarchy, but also leaking and planting stories as well. Now, some tabloids are not too happy about this airing of the family's dirty laundry. For The Sun, this is Sussex, referring to their titles, Sussex Lies and Videotape. And it, it is, the paper says, a Netflix fakery storm. All right, well, sticking with viral celebrity gossip Solange, the papers are also widely discussing the nether regions of an actor on the TV series White Lotus. Yeah, and it is a nude scene that has potentially some implications. As Variety tells us, uh, the actor Theo James, who we see here, um, he has admitted that he used a prosthetic in a nude scene on uh, the, the series. It had uh, people, viewers' jaws dropping. And he told a, to a late-night talk show that upon seeing this contraption before wearing it, he said, quote, it is like it was stolen off a donkey. The thing is ginormous. Now, viewers see seemed to agree, and now they know that it doesn't actually belong to his own body. But on a serious note, such use of over-the-top, over-average uh, endowments can actually be quite bad for us. Uh, this is according to Le Monde in an opinion piece. Their sex columnist was just this weekend writing about how we all must safeguard our self-esteem to push back against the fake and to get wiser about the real size and shape of our most intimate parts. I know that's not the only salacious controversy that there was on that show, Solange. I read this morning that Twitter users, at least, are also upset about the fact that the Americans in the hotel there are only eating in the hotel and not enjoying all of the amazing food that Italy has to offer where the show is set. So looks like a lot, a lot of things to be criticized about that second season of White Lotus. Scandal-prone show, <laughs> it sounds like it is. <laughs> Indeed. Solange Moujan with the Press Review. Thank you very much.